right. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. Welcome 2023. Uh, for those of that you don't know me, I'm Jessica Johnson, the Vice President of the Storage Business Owners Alliance. Thank you for attending another one of our self-storage unlocked webinar series. We do these about two to three times a month to help bring education to the self-storage industry to help you all operate your facilities and market your facilities better. And today we're going to be talking about how to audit your social media accounts to make sure that they're performing to the best of its ability to get you some leads and attractions to your websites, which ultimately will convert over to rentals is the main goal. So and then I'm going to bring up our panelists. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. All right, we're going to do this. We're on a new platform this year for everyone out there. We used to use Hopin and StreamYard. Now we're using Eventbrite and Zoom. Um, so I'm getting used to this. So apologies if there's any technological kinks or quirks that happen, uh, but I'm going to go around real quick uh, around the house and have everybody just introduce themselves so you can get to them. I know these ladies, these are some great friends of mine in the industry. They're amazing marketers, and I'm going to go in traditional fashion, ABC. So, Alana, you're up first. Perks of having a name starts with an A. I always go first. My <laughs> name is Alana Ross. I'm the business development manager for storageauctions.com as well as Storage Gives. Awesome. All right. G.H., I have to sit here and think about it for a second. I'm just kidding. Grace, you're next. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Uh, my name is Grace Potty. I am with Absolute Storage Management. We're a third-party management provider in the uh, industry, and I am struggling with my light today. I really feel like I'm in the witness protection program, um, so forgive me. I might go off camera, make some little scene changes, and come right back, hopefully be able to see me a little bit better. Awesome. Okay, Holly. I really hope Grace comes back with different outfits like every 10 minutes. <laughs> different <laughs> <lighting. be> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Holly Fiorello. I am the Vice President of Marketing for Call Potential. We are a communication platform where you can start your own call center uh, and connect your operations as well as a CRM. I am located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and I'm excited to be here with you all. So thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, Holly. And just Real quick around the room, Alana, uh, yeah. and she's back. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of us, uh, actually all of us, are heavily involved in the industry. Um, you know, Grace and, and Holly are part of the YLG, uh, and as well as Alana. Congratulations to Alana for being elected into the Senate for next year, the next two years. So she'll be Before I age out, I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling cool. what was on your bucket list. It is. I'm, I'm listen. I'm talking to Ginny this week. We're gonna have an OLG club if I have anything to do with the it. Old lady gang. I've been talking old lady about gang. the old lady gang forever. Look, I, 41's not that old, okay? But I'm old. But anyway, um, Alana, just tell us your other affiliations. I think you sit on the board for a couple associations. I do. So I am one of the uh, board of directors for the Arizona Self Storage Association. I also assist the board of directors for the Oklahoma Self Storage Association, and then I am on the YLG senators. So yeah. I stay busy, and I just put in my application to be a mentor for the Women's Council. It's what? I mean, I don't know. I should be a mentor because I've only been doing storage for fifteen years, and I feel like I'm still a newbie. You're definitely not. You'd be a great mentor. <laughs> Any lucky lady out there. Holly, how about you? I know you've got a couple of affiliations out there. Yes, for asking. Um, I am a senator for the Young Leaders Group, uh, which I've been a part of that organization, I believe, for the last uh, seven or eight years. And I've been on the Senate for six, I think. Um, I am also on the Pennsylvania Self Storage Association Board and the Florida Self Storage As Association Board with Miss Jessica. Yes, yes. Holly's a new board member for the Florida Storage Association, so we're excited about that. What else, Holly? You were like looking up, like you got some more. Well, I was there. like, I'm not a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we do sponsor cool the women's doing it. Uh, the women's uh, council. So we're we're happy to do that every year. It's one of my favorite events that we go to. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great event. How about you, Grace? Yeah, I have been a member of the Tennessee Self Storage Association 
for a number of years now and recently moved down to Louisiana. And so I am trying to get my feet in the door uh, to participate on that board as well. Would love to uh, learn and share with that group. Um, I have done some mentorship, but they've been in Memphis. And so I'm looking for some local opportunities to do mentorship. And I'm an active member of the YLG and the Women's Council. Uh, love to participate in those events, uh, but I don't sit on those boards yet. I have my hands full with moving and, <laughs> and my husband and dog and the company is growing like weeds in the summer. And so I am just an active member right now and loving that. I'm me, Jessica. I am a board member for the Florida Self Storage Association as well as the Self Storage Association of Michigan. And then I am also president elect for the Florida Self Storage Association for 2024. Yeah, I'll be coming right. off of the trailing, uh, the, the current president, Mark Poole, um, which I'm super excited about because Mark is a great buddy of mine and will be a good mentor in that process. So I'm looking forward. We just started 2023, but I'm ready for 2024 for that purpose um, and heavily involved in the Women's Council. And for the audience out there, especially if you're new in the industry, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to, at a minimum, at least join your state level association to where your facilities reside. Please do join those associations. They're huge advocates for our industry. Your membership dues are very minimal in the grand scheme of things, and they go for good causes, events, networking, advocacy, law changes. Um, they really are a great organization. Um, and then, obviously, the National Self Storage Association, if you want to really up it, you can become part of that. They have a conference coming up in March in New Orleans, which is super exciting. Um, and then we'll be followed by that by another big national conference in April in Las Vegas, the Inside Self Storage uh, Conference and Expo. So, hope to see all of you there. Enough of the interest. Let's dig into the social media stuff, which you know my little heart goes pitter patter for social media. I love it. Uh, I live by it. It works. It's a great organic way to get reach, to get your message out there, to get your branding out there. So. I'm going to start with Alana because Alana made this comment the other day when we were planning. She goes, well, if we're going to talk about social media and auditing, I figured I'd audit our social media channels in this process, which, hey, that was real smart of you, gal. Um, <laughs> tell me what that kind of looked like for you. Like, what, what did you do in that process? How would somebody go about starting this? So for me, I wanted to see the growth um, where I was at the beginning of last year and where we grew to. Uh, so if you're looking at your metrics, uh, we were at about 5,000 followers and we ended up at 7,100 for the end of the year. Uh, when you're thinking of the grand scheme of things, that's a solid number. I now put the goal, I want to be 10,000 by the end of 2023. So we're shooting for 10. If, you know, if I really had the time, I'd shoot for 70,000. So oh. the, the hustle is hard with the social media. I looked at the different type of posts we were doing, our um, average days between posts, our regular posts, because we do things called Tip Tuesday. So and we alternate because our posts go both to storage operators and to the bidders. So I was looking to see everything from engagement, um, you know, clicks, reshares, comments, um, the redirects, uh, when it says sign up on our website, how many clicks came through the sign up and where did they go? Did they go to our sign up as a bidder? Did they go as sign up to a seller? So I really looked into the analytics of ours um, through the various, we we strictly have two that we do now, but then that spins my little social media wheels and I'm like, two could become four. <laughs> so <laughs> quickly, right? <laughs> quickly. So, so we're exploring our options, but yeah, those are the metrics that I was looking at. Where did I start and where did I get and how did I get there? And that, that's a great starting point. So I just celebrated three official years with the SBOA yesterday. And when I entered the organization, I was the director of marketing before I became the vice president. Um, and I did the same thing that you did, Alana. We had a stale Facebook page. And what I mean by stale was um, very inconsistent posting, um, so inconsistent that sometimes there was like a three to six month gap in between posting. And I think Holly said this once, <laughs> if, she's, if you see that on social media, 
your first inclination as a consumer is that business is probably no longer in operation, right, Holly? So consistency is key. Um, that's something that I looked at when I first came on board with the organization was there wasn't consistency. We had Facebook and LinkedIn only. And between the two platforms, um, I want to see we had maybe a thousand followers. And now with it three years of diligent and grinding, and this was all done organically. This was not through paid advertising. We're hovering around 7,000. My goal is the same as Alana, and I want 10,000 by the end of the year across all of our platforms. Now, the SEOA markets a little bit differently. We're not marketing a storage tenant. Um, however, I just want people to understand that with a plan, you can get there and you can get there quickly. I mean, we did that within three years, right? So that's pretty good organic growth. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. Now, we were Facebook, LinkedIn only. Now we're on Instagram. Uh, we are, we always had a YouTube, but again, a very still YouTube, not consistent enough posting. We are now on Twitter and I'm coming for your TikTok. TikTok's <laughs> next on my list. Um, and we'll get into some TikTok talking here in a little bit, but Holly, have you, like, what would you do in the process of, like, getting started? Same stuff as uh, a lot of stuff or some different stuff? So, um, I have been, you know, I've been in a marketing position for, <laughs> Wow, like um, 15 years. So mm -hmm. I'm like going back to, you know, when social first started being used by businesses. Um, I think what you need to do before you even do an audit is determine what your goals with social media are. Is it brand awareness? Is it, are you trying to drive conversions? And I'm not saying it has to be one or the other, but determine what your goals are um, and then see where you're at now. And if it's even just with one platform, see where you're at now. And then how can you drive content to drive those goals? And then looking in the rear room here. So I used to use Excel spreadsheets and manually like look like it's January 1st. Here's how many followers I have. I pop it into my spreadsheet every year. Look at reviews it kind of in a similar manner. Um, whereas now we're at a sophistication that we use, you know, a tool that I just type in a date range and it populates those reports for me. Um, so when we try to do a little bit of both of, you know, driving conversions and, but mostly I, we use our social channels for brand awareness. So I'm looking at the metrics, like what's our organic reach, what's our, you know, paid spend. Um, and it's hard to, to do that, right? Like to see if I'm paying just to get brand exposure, how do you measure that? Are those interactions? Are the impressions? You know, what, what's the ROI? <laughs> so, yeah. It is hard to quantify, um, but I would say that it's dollars well spent, especially if you are looking for brand awareness and engagement, because the more you start to pop up in that newsfeed and that algorithm, you just continue to keep popping up in that newsfeed and algorithm. So definitely worth it. Grace, what is your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, I have to look at social media from kind of two points of views. One, I think mirrors a lot of what you're talking about, like a business to business kind of we're using Facebook and um, Instagram and LinkedIn to push out information about Absolute um, to attract, well, really just to share information, share um, celebrations, uh, release announcements. Like in a lot of ways, social media is a, is a more widely used blog and it creates this like environment where we can connect with one another. And because I know Jessica, I'm going to really interact with her anniversary celebration yesterday because I know Alana I want to celebrate or or comment and, and like be there to support her as they're growing and changing same with Holly and, and call potential and so like there's the b2b side of social media but then we also have our properties which really are more of a b2c and in my experience it's really really difficult for us to sell storage units or parking spaces on social media. Um, and I will admit, we, we aren't using TikTok. And so I, I can't speak to if that has higher engagement and higher rental numbers. Um, we are focusing our efforts on Facebook and Instagram because they're now connected. Thank you, Meta. Um, and <laughs> they could do better. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? I missed it. I said they could do better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> um, and we 
we've we've dabbled with having some properties have LinkedIn pages, but because our properties just don't engage with businesses to the level that that we as a management company like. It's really difficult to, to engage with consumers, I think, on LinkedIn. It's much more B2B focused. At least that's my perspective. And so for our properties, I tell all operators, whether you are under our management company or if I'm consulting with you or just having a cup of coffee, which I love to do, is you need to have Facebook claimed because if you don't have it claimed, somebody's going to create it for you and it's going to be filled with wrong information. Because Facebook is still a large place where people go and look for data. So they might not be looking to rent from you on Facebook, but if they're already a, a, a tenant of yours and you have a catastrophe, you have an ice storm, you have something, weather conditions, um, natural disaster, a lot of our tenants go to Facebook to get updates. Um, and so we see a lot of engagement on Facebook pages when it comes to property closings and what's my next step, um, holiday hours, those kind of things. It's much easier just to post it on Facebook. And also like Facebook is still a, a ranking factor and a signaler to Google. And so it still helps you with your SEO um, rankings. And so I always suggest, yes, at least have Facebook and through the recommendation of, of other marketers, um, also have Instagram because again they're they're connected. It's a little easier to manage both now. So that's my perspective on of, of social media. You know, we only have so many resources, and so we have to like prioritize where to spend time. And I think to be profitable for a property on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll even throw in LinkedIn to this, it takes a lot of effort, <laughs> um, much more effort, consolidated efforts from both a marketer and also the team member on site and so i just have not been convinced of that value and so we use facebook in a very limited capacity granted we still post like four times a month it's still up to date we're still putting polls out there like we're still relevant and frequent with our content but um not as intense and not as personable as you would see on like a LinkedIn or an absolute source management page. It's just, I think, different. Who was it? Holly or Alana, Jessica, y'all said, you know, before you start social media, figure out like what's the audience, what's the purpose. And I think to boil it down, that that's my perspective of the purpose for properties is different than the purpose for corporate. Yeah. I got to tell you guys something before I forget. Because Grace said TikTok. Um, we went to um, we went to Puerto Rico and we stayed at a hotel by JFK because if anybody knows, driving to JFK is a freaking nightmare. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're down in the hotel at the Hilton having dinner, right? And there's this, like, there was only two tables there. It's a very, very small uh, area. I was my husband and my daughter. And the other table was a family. And um, we went back up to our room and I'm scrolling TikTok and the daughter that was with that family starts showing in my feed mm -hmm. because they thought we were together and we're like, you probably want to follow her. The proximity. I think, yeah. I think that's a little dangerous. However, as a business, if it does the same thing for a business, that could be a local thing for marketing. So you just connected those dots for me. But I was like, this is scary. <laughs> Like I made sure immediately mine was private and then also like deleted some of the videos that had my daughter or anything in it. Like I was like, I do not need to be stalked through TikTok. So anyway, sorry, just wanted to share that. Their proximity tool is very, very specific. When I'm in Florida on shenanigans with Jessica, all of a sudden I'm getting Florida people TikToks. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they yeah. they know where you are and they they do track proximity. Uh, which to business to for like me at auctioning off units, I may upload a TikTok when I'm in Arizona and I'm you know highlighting a storage facility in North Carolina. That's not going to help me unless I can get that proximity. And now that they have location codes on there, I can I can put where where my location is and it will market to people in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about some good GM mapping there. Woof. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, I do want to get into TikTok a little bit later, only because um, it's a phenomenon. TikTok made me do it. TikTok made me buy it. It's real. 
I just bought a new hair weave off TikTok. I can't wait for it to come in. Um, but it, it's where I'm watching these influencers. I'm like, my God, this girl's hair looks amazing. And she's got the hair halo. I'm like, it's $40. I want it. Got and like Jessica and I were on a six hour car ride and sang songs about corn. Poor <laughs> Alex was with us. It was horrible. Yeah. I, I guess do good things about the head social, car. Yeah. The, the social selling aspect is there on TikTok. Um, and, and we'll get into that a little bit later because I've got some, some stats pulled up for TikTok. So yeah, definitely um, starting with defining the goals. I do agree with what Grace is saying, especially for our owners and operators out there. And I know most of the ones that are on the call today um, and that we interact with at the SBOA are more smaller and more independent uh, owners and operators that may not necessarily have the bandwidth, the resources, the infrastructure to have like, a dedicated social media person. However, let me say a few things to you. There's technologies in the space that are now freeing up your property manager's time, right? So what are you going to do to fill that time? They should be doing some marketing efforts for you of some sort. If they are your front line of defense at your front office, there's no reason that they can't be drive your local market, do grassroots marketing, or even do some of this social media stuff if they feel comfortable. So let's make sure that they feel comfortable with it. If they don't, what would I do? Do you find resources, guys? Would I hire a college intern? Would I hire a marketing agency? Would I hire a company like Absolute, uh, third party management that kind of does everything for us from operations to marketing? Like, what would you guys suggest for a smaller owner that could just thought about all these tasks you have to do day in, day out? Now you're going to add in marketing and social media marketing. Like, now I'm feeling overwhelmed. How do we help them? Yeah, the biggest I, thing for us was make a plan, see yeah. what your plan entails and how often and kind of map out the time it takes, because I can whip up a social media post in five minutes, you know, and have it done. So it was, what is the plan? How often, what platforms, how much time does this consume? Do I need somebody else? Yeah. Holly, what would you suggest? Have you ever used a marketing agency to kind of help you guys kind of get the, the ball rolling? Uh, so, you know, I have, again, I have a lot of different experience. So when I was with uh, the storage group, which is an uh, online marketing company, we had a social media wing and did that. Um, we, we found that if you just wanted to be active, like Grace said she does with some of her locations where she hasn't seen social media uh, pay off, that that was a good option for them because it's, you know, not necessarily a, a big social campaign to just kind of refresh. Um, but if you're, if you're trying to make social a strategy um, and you don't have someone on your team, you're going to want a marketing director or you're going, if you have some, if you want to do it, you have interest in it, you're going to dedicate time. Um, but I, I think unless you have, you know, kind of a, I'm not saying you can't do it with different brands because you definitely can, but um, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. You have to have a lot of diverse skills. You have to be good at communicating. You have to know tone. You have to use design tools. You have to be analytical and strategic and all of these pieces come together. Um, you could have, you know, an intern do that, but that's what they want to do. But there's a lot that goes into it to like execute really well. If that makes sense. Like for instance, we, we put, I'll talk for, you know, Paul Potential. We've had um, good success with social media, but we're mostly just like, hey, this is in the past. Hey, we're going to be at this event. Here's a new product that's out. Here's a new feature that's out. And since bringing on another team member who focuses on that, we've seen like, you know, a 5,000% increase in engagement because she's looking at what people are interacting with, best times to post. She's engaging with the community. So she's just not broadcasting and not coming back. She's really bringing that brand voice to life. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess you just need to figure out what you want to do, what your goals are, and then do you want to do it? Do you want to pay someone who has, you know, is going to own it? Because um, you can do it well and you cannot. I yeah. will add in, we did bring in Fine View Marketing uh, when we were launching Storage Gives. They were a huge asset for us to, to, mm -hmm. to bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. is amazing, interview. yeah. A company like a like a a tailored agency like Fine View Marketing is a marketing agency that specializes in storage. They're a great place to start. Jessica, thank you for the plug to say 
if you want to do social media, bring in third party management. That's probably that's probably a little bit of a jump. <laughs> so well, I mean, you know what I meant. Like yes, yes. You have, it, to have people important. running your ops and you gotta have the whole suite of um, services though, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and please don't hear me say don't think of third party management as a solution. But right. I think you can start smaller and um Oh, I have like three things in my brain, and I was just enamored by what Alana and Holly said. Both of everything escapes my head. Um, the tools you can use, like Holly said, you need to use uh, design tools. Canva, C A N V A, is free, and it is almost as powerful as like a Photoshop. It's it's become pretty pretty powerful, especially if you pay the two hundred dollars a year to go pro. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what I was gonna say. We have to remember that social media is a a part, a single part of a content strategy and mm -hmm. of a like public relations strategy. And so I think like if you're figuring out, you know, where to start, look at your content and say, can I hire somebody to help me create more content and publish more blogs and engage with the community and write more about us content on the website and um, or can I hire somebody that maybe has a little bit broader skill range who can help focus on marketing components and really like those inbound marketing efforts to, to try and broadcast your facility, broadcast your product, and bring people in. And social media is a part of that larger strategy. Um, I, I do think that marketing, local marketing, is an untapped component to, to, to storage and rentals. And when we were at 99% occupied back in 2021, I think that was the year to, to really focus on marketing and start kind of like turning on that faucet and ramping up. And so if you're doing it now and your rentals might be dropping, and then I'm, if, you, if you have not thought strategically about how to engage with local businesses, how to engage with them on social media, off social media. I would totally make that a, a goal for first quarter of 2023. Yeah, definitely. Um, since I, I hear a lot of a lot of you had just said a couple things, like when do I post? What do I post? How do I post? Let's talk about that. What's the level of frequency? What should they be posting? And how should they be doing it? Is it, I get up on Tuesday morning and I manually go post to the platforms I'm on? Do I adopt technology and let it push it for me? Let's talk about some of that. What would you suggest, Holly? It all depends, <laughs> right? Like um, in terms of like when to post or where to post, I'd start with one. If you are new and you're doing this yourself, start with one channel. Um, and something that you're probably familiar with or interested in learning more about and working on that Canva, like Grace was uh, mentioning, they have templates that you can go in there and just search and you can just, you can upload your logos too. So it'll automatically put it in, or you can just leave your logo off <laughs> and just take it, you know, download it and upload it to social. Um, we use HubSpot. So they have a social listening tool and I'm sure you guys have similar features, but it posts for us on the times that our audience is most engaged. Um, so we don't even have to, you know, necessarily pick a time or we can post real time if we're just, you know, ready, ready to get it out there. Um, so technology has come so far that we kind of lean on some of those tools. Yeah. How about you, Alana? What do you guys use? So we use Hootsuite. So we kind of look at those metrics that they provide us of, you know, when and where, uh, as far as the, Consistency, we try to do one a day, but only if we have the content. I'm not going to throw garbage up there just to post something. Uh, you know, I used the example yesterday when we were talking. I don't need to know what Linda's having for lunch. That does not pertain to me. But if you have nothing else to post and that's what you're going to post, no one needs to know that. But if you have having gate maintenance done or your roof done or your asphalt done and you are updating things or you got new feather flags and they look fantastic come find me down group 66 there's a lot of great content you can post just you have to have it so once you figure out what content you're posting that's where you can kind of figure out those metrics of how often for example we do tip tuesday we talked about that and we had to break it up of 
bidders one day or one week and then the buyers or the sellers the next week. And it was just, we had so much content to share that we had to start breaking things up and looking to see. We do the same thing Holly does though, trade shows, where are you going to find us? But we don't just post like a picture of, uh, or just words. We use pictures. We also try to relate our team to people so they see us and they see our faces and they see our names so it brings back recognition. What do you guys use for your sorry I'm going to say something first. What do you guys use for your content planning tools? Cuz that, that is something that's not necessarily integrated into our workflow right now. We use ClickUp so it's kind of a manual process. Um but how are you planning out your 3 months of content? We have a content creator under our in in the marketing department and she has essentially an excel spreadsheet and so we meet once a quarter to talk about those next three months and we do subjects and we fill in you know what trade shows are we going in and so she's got like a framework to start on and then as things come up we, we fill it in um, okay. additionally and it's she's got a content like roadmap if you will for the properties content because it's different types of content and um uh, I'll throw this in here. We also post everything that Alana said because all those are great, like fresh flowers, um, new team members, let's celebrate, you know, like uh, limited availability or like exclusive availability doesn't happen very often, that kind of post. But also we try to fill in also frequently asked questions that mm -hmm. you're always going to get with first time renters. You're always going to get with um, people who don't know what climate control versus non climate. So we also try to fill in some of that content too, and that evergreen type content just gets recycled uh, ever, ever so often, every six months or so, the same type of post will show up, but it's redesigned, rejuvenized. Uh, but yeah, so we use Excel, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're saying we do Excel and we'll even plan around social posts to other avenues. Like if I'm doing a blog mm -hmm. on here's the top 10 tips I'm giving you. Every single one of those tips are going to link back to our social media. So when I put out the one, it's going to push you back to our blog, which pushes you back to our website. My email signature has the icons for you to click to push back to social media. So it's like a constant rotation of pushing. Oh, yeah. I think the purpose of social media is to redirect traffic to your website. Until social media can actually rent that unit for me, I want that user going to my website. <laughs> Yeah, so then, Grace, by you saying that in any type of post, it's critical that you have some form of linking that's going to get them as quick as possible to your website because that's where the conversion for the potential reservation or rental is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we I don't know. I don't know if Hotspot, uh, I'm sorry, HubSpot and what's the other one, Holly? You said Sweet. Hootsuite, thank you. I don't know if uh, HubSpot and Hootsuite have this capability. We use reputation.com. They're our um, review management tool. They also have a social uh, module as well. And so they can, like, we can create, like, the text. And it says, you know, like, interested in learning. Do you need non-climate? Like, understand. Here's three bullet points in the graphic. And then find out more, we can actually link directly to that specific property page. Like there's softwares out there that'll do these merged fields for you so that you don't have to manually have a spreadsheet of your landing pages per property. If you've got 10 different properties, like you're not posting 10 separate posts, you're posting one mm -hmm. and it goes to those 10 separate Facebook okay. pages. That I think is really key and really critical if you're looking to scale your portfolio and grow your your storage um, empire. That's the <laughs> those those scheduling tools are key because I can yeah. schedule a post over to LinkedIn and it's more towards a storage operator where I'm not going to share that to Facebook or I'm not going to share the image to Instagram because it doesn't apply there. The majority of my followers on Facebook and Instagram are bidders, not the storage facilities. So, you know, we really delegate out, but there may be some, hey, we're closed Christmas. That's going to all three platforms. And it's so easy to schedule out to multiple platforms to make it makes life 10 times easier. 
Yeah. And not only is it easy, right? Like we use Hootsuite as well. It's going to give me exactly what it's going to look like on each one of those platforms because they all have a different feel and look to them. A Twitter post versus a square photo Instagram post has a very different feel and look to it. So within the platform, you can see, because and it's so easy. You go into Hootsuite, you link in all of your social media channels, you develop your stuff in Canva, which is Listen, when I first started with Canva, my first design probably took me several hours because I was being so nitpicky about it. I can go in Canva now in less than five minutes. I can create something that looks like a professional trained graphic designer did it because it's repetition and we do it all the time, right? Uh, you can not only can you see what it's going to look like, it pushes it for you. And then it's going to start analyzing those followers per platform. And it knows exactly, hey, you might think, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. is the most ideal time for me to post and get the most reach to my audience. This week's going to tell you, no, you're wrong. Tuesday at 6 p.m. is actually the most ideal time when your audience is online and watches your content. So it takes all that guesswork out for you. And then what you can do on the back end is go to your Google Analytics and see where your acquisitions are coming from to your website. And if they are coming from social, you can then make, you know, a fair assumption that social media posting is working for your business. So um, let's see what else I wanted to talk about. Let's see. Let's talk post. Uh, let's talk about this. We'll talk about two things. What about your competitors? It's so funny. I said one time in a session, I said, I follow all of our competitors. And they're like, well, can't your competitors see that you're following them? Sure they can. What do you care? Like, follow them. And why would you follow them, right? I would follow them. Because I want to be attuned to what they're doing and I want to see what's working for them. Um, there's Chandra from Amy's Attic uh, Self Storage down in Texas. They use this term called R&D, you know, like, like research and development. Nope, rip off and duplicate. So, what your competitor does, if you see that they got, you know, 300 likes on this particular post, something was engaging about it, take that, don't do it verbatim and copyright it. But give it a similar feel, put your brand voice and your brand identity around it. And then there's your content. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Go see what other people are doing. Go see what is working for them. And then just take it and apply it to your own brand. Have any of you done that? And I'll, I'll back this up by another thing. Some of the silliest things that, that we've posted that I was like, okay, guys, we'll post that, whatever. When Wordle came out and was like this big thing, our previous social media person, Alec, did a really cool SBOA Wordle post, and that thing went viral. And I'm thinking, like, when he sent it to me for approval, I'm like, yeah, that's cute. I like it. You know, I don't know what it's going to do. And by God, it did a lot. So are any of you looking at, like, what your competitor posts or what other people in the industry are posting to kind of garner some of those ideas for what your own content should be? Definitely. Um, all right. Okay. I'll say I think trend jacking is more and I'm <laughs> I'm kind of trend jacking. That's a great yeah. Trend. Well, like so I mean I don't I don't want to post the same things as my competitors. I want to position myself differently. Um, in terms of if you're in different markets, I think that that's okay. You know, you're looking at you know someone who's not in your market, what they're doing for inspiration. But um, I think like the trend jacking with where what you know you guys talk about the corn song like the first couple times you see someone do a parody of a corn song it's hilarious the 20th iteration is not hilarious and you don't want that sound in your feed anymore so um being able to you know it's it's good to listen and to watch and to see who's engaging with their content and what kind of content is engaging people but um i think it's important to really have your own you know voice when it, i'm not you know not saying that you were saying not have your own voice, but I think it's important to have your own your own voice and your own style. And if someone beats you to a trend, you don't have to do it to re as a response because even though you're, they're your competitors, we're not always in, you know competition, right? Like they're a friendly competition. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that. I, I <laughs> like definitely. Like, did you think it's better for them to come across salesy? My ten by tens were on sale this week for one hundred fifty bucks. Or do you think it would be better for them to come across more as a resource provider here's your top moving tips or do you think it needs to be a blend of the two 
there used to be a best practice that your sales post should be less than 20% of your posting, but I don't know what the number is now because it's not something that I've researched in quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't handle the high, high frequency sales. Like that's the quick way to get me to unfollow and unlike you. If you were trying to, you know, constantly put it in my face, if it's, hey, here's a solution, this might be a problem. That's one thing, not call now for 1099. Like I don't, you're not going to get me on a used car salesman. I think we also have to remember too, again, my mind is going to Facebook. And so all of these posts that y'all are referencing, I'm seeing it on Facebook. Facebook made a major change back in 2017, where it is much harder for your non likes to see you. Like it's almost impossible. And I will say <laughs> It is impossible for the storage industry because we are not a, a trendy industry. Like Jessica, you mentioned you got those hair extensions. A, it was $40 for those hair extensions. They're really low cost. But also, like, you can do that at your house on a, on a Tuesday night. Like, it's not this life-changing event that's causing you to need that hair extension, you know? And so our product is very different. And so, again, I think we have to use social media differently. Than a, than a trendy product would or a, a, an influencer product would. And so because you're not, your posts are not being seen by new tenants, it's being seen, or new leads rather, it's being seen by your current tenants. I don't flood social media with, um, uh, with specials. We do post a lot of specials on Google, which Google listings um, has a, it's not really that new, but like you can post on Google listings and that just is in that infograph, uh, the knowledge chart or knowledge graph that shows up. And so I do encourage you to post specials there because Google, you're going to be seen by, by leads, potential leads, not just current customers. I wish that feature was used more, honestly. I really do. I because Facebook's just crap when you're trying to search for a business, like... I'm very anti-Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> when, I know I'm looking place, up, but... when I'm looking up locations, whether I need to reach out to them or get an address or find out what management software they're using, and I'm looking on the internet, if they have a solid social media presence, that page comes up pretty quick. It it will it will rank up there in Google. So if you have a good social media presence, it does add to your searchability within the World Wide Web. Um, one thing I was going to go back to as far as the competitors, I just had this conversation with one of my marketing members on my team. Um, a competitor started copying something that we do, and I told her, imitation is the highest form of flattery. I said, if you want to start doing tips on Tuesday too, that's okay. Like tip Tuesday is a common thing, but it's weird. You weren't doing it until recently. <laughs> and, uh, and it's noticed like, Hey, more power to you. Their sales guy is pushing it out there. He sees it works for us. You know, I've, I'm friends with, with the company and they've come back and said, Hey, yeah, he's taking notice. So that's great. You know, if you want to give more tips to people, how about it? I, you know, we all want to make self-storage better, but yeah, it's noticed when they, when people do it. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I take it as flattery. Hey, you thought I was doing something really well. So you want to do it too. Do y'all use um, Google Trends at all to, to try and like identify the trends before they happen, like get ahead of mm -hmm. the, uh, like, like the corn song, like be the first one to put out a corn song instead of following it? Would it be on there? I guess I, I don't, I hardly ever use it. Probably before our industry is using it, yes. But I almost feel like, and this is something like Melissa Stiles is a, a good friend of all of us here too, and, and we all, we talk about this. Google's kind of dying in, in the search industry, right? Like people are going to TikTok to search for things. Now Instagram has an Instagram Maps feature. So people are searching for things there. I'm um, not saying people don't still use Google. I use it every single day, but they're getting less traction. So are they able to accurately in real time follow the trends in the social in the social atmospheres? Do they have, you know, the ability to do that? Search so engines are getting so weird. To give you an idea, <laughs> I just had this conversation with somebody else as well. Yeah. I My computer did an update and it set my search feature back to Bing. I was like, who still uses Bing? So I didn't realize it and I searched. Well, I searched the Arizona Self-Storage Association and it said permanently closed. I was like, what? 
So I reached out and they were like, yeah. So then I searched our company permanently closed. I was like, what the heck? And on Google, we are still open, but on, but on Bing, we were closed. And I was like, holy crap. It was just Bing. And it was the weirdest thing. It was, I, I would say if I'm looking up a storage facility, but probably six out of 10 times, Bing has them closed. Oh, I don't know what Bing did. Bing closed all y'all's businesses. <laughs> yeah, I had that same update happen, Alana. And while we're on the topic of listings, even though it's a little out of social, but it has relevancy, I had to go to my lawyer yesterday, a new lawyer, search the address on Google, get there. I'm in the shopping, like this plaza, and I'm like, I call. Oh, we're not at that address anymore. So me and my, you know, fashion of wanting to teach people, I come into the secretary and like, can I please update your Google business profile for you while I'm here? Because since it's not updated, I went to the complete wrong address. That's frustrating to a consumer, right? Luckily, they were within a 10 minute drive of one another. But imagine if it would have been a 45 minute drive of one another, I would have had to reschedule that entire appointment. So the listing management, um, and, and then the reviews that you can get through Google and social media. That's another reason why we want to be on Facebook, right? Because we can get those Facebook reviews. They help build the authority. Consistency is critical. The crawlers and the search engines are weird, but Holly brings up a good point. People are starting to use TikTok more as their search engine and Google. So for that purpose, and me as a marketer, like, uh, I'm going to start marketing a little bit on TikTok. And I did this experiment the other day when we were talking. I went and looked up the hashtags for self-storage. And I have them pulled up right here now, too. That if you go to TikTok and you hashtag self-storage facility, there's 1.8 million views to just that one hashtag. And then there's a whole a whole other plethora of hashtags that are out there. So um, I think... You know, do I think it like, should be your core focus? No, absolutely not. But do I think it's going to become to have some major relevancy here in the near future? Absolutely, I do. So this is like an onion, y'all. Like, it's got many layers. You have to peel back all these different layers. Um, and we just want to make sure that you all are doing that. I want to bring up this comment from Debbie. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Max from Gate by Self Storage because he's on this call. Max is team does a fantastic job with their social media. In fact, when I go to conferences and I'm asked to talk about social media, I usually take Max's examples and use them to show people this is the type of posting that you should be doing. It's funny. It's engaging. One of my most favorite ones that he does, he wanted a feature that they have free movie trunks. So he has a gift of Oprah, an image of Oprah, and it's like, you get a moving truck, and you get a moving truck, and you get a moving truck. That's relatable to a common person as they're scrolling, and that's going to be that thumb stopper as they're scrolling because they see Oprah's giving away something free. They want to know what it is. Well, it's free moving truck. So Debbie says, I watch Max. He does a great job, and he's not our competitor, but he's consistent. He number one, and he has a good variety of posts. Content. Rule number two, consistency, content. Several of his posts have made me LOL. Now you're, it's social media. It's meant to be social. You're trying to get that psychological human reaction. So he got one over. He made her laugh. Just yep. a matter of time before he goes viral. So Max, you're going on TikTok, whether you like it or not, bud. We're going to figure this out for you. Well, we'll create his own channel. I will say, and I've told Max this several times, on Facebook Live, you can turn off who you get notifications from. Max is my only person I get notified when he goes live. He's so stinking adorable and cute. And his little Southern accent, like uh -huh. I want to just buy crap in Georgia so I can store it in his storage facility. In Augusta, Georgia, I know where Max is. <laughs> like I'm in Arizona and I know about Gate 5 Self Storage. I know that they put in a new convertible unit. I, I know everything about his storage facility, not just because he's my customer, but because I follow his social media because I want to see Max. He is adorable and has done such a great job of humanizing his storage facility. I, I wouldn't doubt that people in his area just want to go see him. That's awesome. Yeah, he's got a human element to his brand, which is a very critical piece. 
Uh, Max jumps on and live streams all of the time. He is the owner operator of that facility. He takes the time. It literally takes seconds to turn on your live stream, go on there. And Max offers his specials in his live stream videos. I've seen them. I've heard them, you know, so Again, there's relevancy here with social media. Unfortunately, we're coming up to the um, last little bit of time here. Uh, so I just want to thank the audience that joined us today um, and give you guys, we've got about three minutes left before we have to stop. If anyone has any questions, please pop those in the chat real quick. We'll try to get to those for you um, or you can put them in the Q&A. Um, but ladies, what's, what's your favorite trend that you're seeing right now while we wait to see if the audience um, asks? Us any questions? Anybody have a favorite trend going on out there in social world? Ooh, an interesting For me, the one I'm hopping on right now, I am that we are hopping on TikTok, but we are hopping on TikTok to promote buyers because people are really curious of what they store in these storage units. And if you go and look, you are seeing a lot of auction units. So we're going to start highlighting some of ours to, to build that audience. But the videos, people are really drawn to those quick videos. We're like goldfish. We have a very short attention span and don't like reading. Yeah, video content works. And video imagery is always going to probably outperform on social, any type of long form text content. Consumers have, we've got like three seconds. The same as like your website load speed. If it's not loading it within three seconds, they're hitting the X letting, they're going to the next competitor's website. If your content fit, grab them within three seconds, they're probably moving on, right? So Grace, how about you? Any fun trends out there that you're watching or like that are happening right now? We are trying to test more uh, influencers. And so I'm on these like find an influencer site and trying to engage with them and pick the right one. And so that's something new that we are trying. And I think it's also important to say like for owners listening, you can advertise on social media sites without having to have a profile too. That's it. That's I think something that I was hesitant to do because we don't have Instagram. I'm sorry. We don't have TikTok. And so I didn't want to find a TikTok influencer, but you still can. Um, and so same with Facebook, you can still advertise on Facebook without having a very active page and Instagram's the same. Uh, but yeah, finding some influencers to help boost our awareness. And I'll let you know if it's successful. Yeah, and, and Holly mentioned Melissa, our good friend over at Storage Asset Management. She was probably one of the first in the industry. I think she is the first in the industry that dabbled in this influencer marketing, had some really good results. They did pay the influencer. Um, which you could go to some of those paid databases to find one that's right for you. You could even search, just go search the different channels and look at realtors um, content. Your local realtors are in touch with the people that are moving, downsizing. They need storage probably in, a, you know, in the interim period or maybe long-term, depending on what their situation is. And a lot of these realtors are doing really good uh, social media posts and reels and stories out there. See which one you like, have contact them, have a conversation with them. Would you do this for me for free? Would you do it for a nominal fee? Would you do it if I let you rent a storage unit for the next year for free? And then have them document that entire process. What it's like from your website interaction to the phone call to your facility, to the gate access, to the security around the facility, like have them showcase all of it. People watch the silly thing on social media. Um, and the ones that I follow on TikTok, the ones that are in self-storage, it's all owners uh, talking about their journey in self-storage, how they got into the business, um, and then why their facility is better than the next. Holly, last couple minutes before we want to jump, what are, what are your trends that you're watching? I wouldn't really say it's trends, just more like strategy that we want to implement this uh, year. Same thing, better implementation of short form videos. Um and then also those like off the cuff videos, you know, at conferences, like stepping to the side and doing a quick, you know, 30 second video and just bringing our brand to life more as, you know, software. We want to see the people behind the technology too. So uh, that's kind of what we're trying to do. <laughs> I had so many people comment on my hyperlapse video of me putting my booth together. Mm -hmm. They were like, wow, you really knock that out really quickly in 15 seconds but it was those hyperlapse videos are really doing well in our industry as far as um trade shows yeah. we did one of those and mid setup one of the tvs fell off the frame and busted on the ground 
Oh, and also edited it out. I was like, oh, you should have kept it because we're all like, yeah. My I'm favorite. Thing that I can make a bloopers video. So there's, there's like a four letter word that just resonated throughout the. <laughs> and it sure did. And, and, and one of mine, Phil makes funny faces. So Phil sees me doing the hyperlapse from Call Potential and he comes and makes a Philly, like a silly face. A Philly face. That's, That's what I'm going to start calling it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes a silly face and then he took a screenshot. <laughs> Of himself in my hyperlapse. <laughs> hey, listen, one last point before we close. Remember, I said my Canva, my first Canva took me a few hours. Anything with repetition, my first TikTok, that bad boy took me a few hours to edit, to put text overlay on it, to put music behind it that I thought would like to have good transitions. I can knock out a TikTok video again in less than five minutes, and they're fun quality videos. All of these different apps have like the editing within the native platform too. And then they have other platforms you can go to and, and kind of, but, and they're all syncing with one another. So don't feel like this is like that big of a daunting task. If you create it in one place, you can easily cross post it to other platforms that you're on. So with that, ladies, thank you all so much for being here today. We thanks, have audience, thanks for being here. Join us back in two weeks. We'll be back for another self storage unlock, and it's going to be talking about uh, how to understand your financial statement within your business. There's key uh, lines that you should be looking at and paying attention to um, within your PML. Uh, how do they compare if the numbers aren't looking good? So we'll have more information on that in our newsletter and on our social media channels. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and all the other things that we're on. Um, and follow my friends here. Follow storageoptions.com. Follow Call Potential. And follow Absolute Storage Management. Thank you all for being here. Everybody have a good rest of their Thursday and a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Are you a self-storage owner or operator looking for service providers to help at your facility? Well, the Storage Business Owners Alliance, also known as the SBOA, has you covered. The SBOA is the premier online hub for connecting self-storage owners and operators to industry-leading products and service providers. We provide one-stop shopping for your business with exclusive offers to save time and money. At the SBOA, we believe by coming together, we help owners and operators grow revenue, gain purchasing power, reduce expenses, improve efficiencies, and increase profitability. We also offer many resources such as our conferences and self storage unlock webinars to help self storage owners and operators gain the knowledge needed to become more competitive in the industry. To become an SBOA member or to find out more information, please visit www.thesboa.com today. We can't wait for you to join the Alliance.